In this episode, we're going to talk about the international scale of river difficulty and why it's important to us. This is part of our ongoing safety and rescue series. We're asking ourselves the questions, how can I be safer? And what can I do if something goes wrong on the river? And having a common language for describing difficulty of rapids is really important. If we're going to go boating, we need to know how difficult the rapids are so we can decide whether we have the experience and knowledge to go on that river. It helps us communicate about individual rapids and the river as a whole. The difficulty rating uh, was designed by canoeists and kayakers and is sort of skewed towards canoeists and kayakers. And there's a written description of the difficulty rating. I'll try to post it here somehow. When I'm done, I'll edit it in. It's kind of long and complicated. And I want to kind of go through my thoughts of the classification system. Before I do, I want to remind you this is a difficulty rating. How difficult the rapids are. This is not how splashy they are. It's not how fun they are. It's how challenging and difficult they are. There's a lot of rapids that are very, very difficult but don't seem exciting, where you don't even get wet, but the maneuvers are very difficult that are class four or five. And there's some rapids where you just get doused in the water and it's super exciting, but there's no challenge, there's no difficulty to it. So this isn't, again, splashiness rating or scariness factor, it's how difficult the rapids are. And I wrote everything on the board here so I can remember what to talk about. You probably can't read this, maybe you can, but I summarized the, the international scale of river difficulty, which I'll try to put here on the screen. Maybe it might go down the front, so I'll edit it in somehow. It's long. You should read it so you have an understanding. I summarize the parts I think are important. And let's just start with class one. Class one just means moving water. It's not a lake. There's basically moving water. Uh, Self-rescue is really easy and there's little risk. Now, if you're a canoeist, this matters a lot. If you're a rafter, it's not, this is just moving water. It's almost inconsequential. Class two means there's something going on. There's straightforward and clear channels. That's a good definition of it. Injuries are rare. Self-rescue is common. And group rescue is rarely ever needed. Probably not ever needed. You could fall out, swim to shore, swim back to your boat. It's not that big of a deal. There's class two minus, class two, and class two plus. Uh, for rafters, and this video is mainly for rafters. This, I probably just said that earlier. This is a rafting talk, which is different than other boats. For rafters, uh, class, the difference between class two, two and two plus is not that big of a deal. If you're in a canoe, it's a massive deal. The difference between two minus and two plus might be really big. Class three means there's going to be some rocks, some large waves, some possibly strainers and strong eddies, but they're avoidable. If you have the skill to do it, you can avoid these things pretty easy. If you don't, you could end up with these things. So they're present, they're there, but they're avoidable with some ability level. Self-rescue is usually pretty easy, but group rescue might be required. So here, this is where like you, you want the people around you to hopefully help you out, but you probably can rescue yourself. If you're out of shape, if you can't swim, if you can't get yourself back in the boat, you need a group. If you're physically fit, you can probably self-rescue yourself in general in class three. Class four is defined, I, I like this definition, intense and powerful, but predictable. It could be hard, it could be kind of crazy, but it's predictable. There's nothing that's unpredictable, if that makes sense, and requires precise boat handling. You have to make maneuvers with your boat that are precise. These are things you practice in class three. You make, you practice very precise and you catch difficult eddies. You make difficult ferries. And if you can do that, you have the precise boat handling uh, to, to make it through rapids. There may be must make moves in class four. There could be uh, a sieve you have to miss, right? It's not hard to miss, but you have to miss it. There may be a strainer that's dangerous, that's not right in the way, but you have to make a maneuver to miss it. Undercut rocks, rock, um, wrap rocks, massive holes, things that you, you have to make a move to miss these. If you don't make that move, you end up in the thing. Here, there's more of a risk of injury. It's moderate to high. There was little chance of injury up here, though it's possible to get injured in one, two, and three. In class four, the risk of injury is moderate to high. You could run into a rock really hard, go for a long swim, there's a large risk of injury and self rescue rescue may be difficult. You may have to have a group around you that can help you. We, an aside, we teach our class four rowing schools. Those courses aren't about making you better. Those courses are about how you work as a group to provide safety and work as a team. I call it team boating, call it whatever you want to, but in class four boating, you need to have a group around you that can help you. So class four rapids are intense might require precise maneuvers. There may be a must make move injury, uh, risk of injuries, high, moderate to high, and you may need your group to self rescue. Class five is not on here. 
Class 5 is a whole other world. If you're wrapped in Class 5, you already know what it is. You can look at a wrap and be like, yep, that's Class 5. Big complicated moves, unpredictable, swimming would be awful. You need a group around you setting safety, maybe in multiple places in the rapid. This is team boating. This is difficult. It could be long and complicated. You know class five, at least I know class five when I see it. It's I look at them like, oh man, if I mess this up, this could not go great. Um, probably not gonna die, but you could. I don't know why I brought that up, but uh, it, you look at it like, oh, this could be really bad. This could, this could be a mess. Uh, class six is the final level. I think of class six, you know, there's a lot of definitions of it. And there's a definition in the code of the, the full, full international scale of river difficulty. It's there. The definition is there. I think of it as even if you do a good job and you're very skilled, that you could seriously injure or die. Or it's, it's not right. In class five, if you're a class five voter, and class five is not on here. If you're a class five voter, if you're very skilled, you're very precise, you're agile, you're athletic, you're a good voter, you can run, in my opinion, class five day after day after day after day and have success. It requires a high level of skill to run difficult rapids. In class six, you could be the most skilled voter and something could still go wrong, right? If these rapids are rarely done for a reason and maybe never done, that's a class six rapid. So we don't really talk about class six that much. Most of us out there are voting class three. Again, this is where, you know, assistance might be required, where uh, self-rescue is easy, but group rescue is helpful. Most of us are doing class three, some class four. Very few people out there are actually rafting class five, and pretty much nobody's rafting class six. So a couple of thoughts. Uh, I, I like this as a difficulty scale, and it helps us all share information about rapids. It's also for rivers. I might say the Tuolumne River is class four. To me, that means the highest level rapid on it is class four. Uh, there's actually one rapid on Tuolumne people call class four plus or five, but I, I'll still call it class four. Maybe I'll say class four with five in parentheses. So you know there's one class five. The South Fork of the American is three with a couple three pluses, right? The White Salmon, generally class three plus with a waterfall at the end. And so we use the classific classification scale to describe rivers but it's really meant for individual rapids. The middle fork of the salmon, it's generally class three at high water, it's class four. That's how I might describe it. The rogue is class three with one class four rapid, Blossom Bar. Um, so we do use this to describe rivers, but remember it's really intended for rapids and really designed around canoers and kayakers again. Things that might change, make a rapid more difficult. There are a few things that I would say can make a rapid more than its difficulty. What if it's continuous? If there's a rapid and it just keeps going afterwards, I might bump it up half a notch or a full notch because the consequence of a swim is way more difficult. Uh, if it's super remote or there's more, or it's really difficult to do an evacuation, I might bump it up half a notch or a notch. A class, if a class three rapid in a remote cane with no evacuation, it's more like class four minus, I would say. Uh, if it's really cold, uh, the cold is an added danger. It might be class three in the summer when it's 90 degrees, but if you're in the winter, it's class four because the consequence of a swim could be much worse. And finally, hazards. If there's strainers, if there's sieves, if there's undercut rocks. Although the move is only class three in difficulty, uh, because there's such a big danger there, it might bump it up a level. If it's there but way out of the way, it doesn't really affect it. But if it's kind of in the way, a strainer in a class three makes it class four possibly class five to me. So I will bump things up. If it's really continuous with wood, I'll bump it up quite a bit more because combining continuous nature with wood makes it harder. Okay, that's a mouthful. I said a lot of stuff, uh, but I, I want to, before I did the last part, I just want to reiterate, this is a difficulty rating and this is my quick summarization of the scale and that we should all use the international scale river difficulty so that we're on the same page when we're describing things. Uh, this is subjective. Like we, we don't, there's not an exact, there's not a, a committee that sits around and rates rapids. And, and it's subjective based on a couple of reasons. One, geography. Uh, maybe on the East Coast, what they call class five, we call four plus on the West Coast. Maybe, I'm not saying that's happening, I'm saying maybe. Maybe in Malaysia, what they call class five, we call class four. Maybe what we call class three, 
in Oregon is class two plus in California. So geographically, there are differences. And you have to understand that when you're going to a new place. Uh, the boat type, the boat you're in. For a canoe or a kayak, it might be a little different than a raft because the maneuver is more difficult for a canoe or a kayak than a raft or vice versa. Creature crafts, I know according to Bill Gaiman, everything is class two plop and drop. Uh, so like most things are class two unless there's like a portage or there's wood, then it's class six or it's a creek there or there's not an easy put in or takeout. For, for creature crafts, there's a lot of stuff that's class six because you literally cannot get your boat to the put in or carry it around a rapid or there might be some other mess. So creature crafts are their own thing. They can have their own rating system. I'm not super worried about them. But I have a lot of kayak friends who consider stuff that I think is class four, they might call that class two. It's just the run out of a run. And so I would be careful when talking to really good kayakers about rafting. For them, like a lot of really good kayakers, everything below class five is just, ugh, it's just go do it. And so you gotta be careful when talking to really good kayakers. There's also an ego. People like to underrate rapids. Oh, bedrock is just class three. That to me, that's ego talking. Like bedrock to me on the Grand Canyon is a class four rapid. It's a difficult move. It, it follows this, this definition. There's intense and powerful moves. Uh, may require a must make move, which it does. There's a risk of injury. You can flip and get hurt pretty easily. And rescuing yourself after a nasty swim is, I've seen people need help. So to me, Bedrock is class four, but a lot of people who run it all the time, like, oh, that's easy, it's class three. Uh, a lot of people like to rate rapids lower. And I think that, that's, that, that adds some variability. And I think that it's really important that we try to stay consistent because you may consider yourself a class three boater based on something you've run that's class three. And then if some class five boater says, oh no, that's only, a run is class three, but it's actually more difficult than that. You can get into trouble. I see a lot of new boaters get in trouble because runs are underrated by really good boaters. They say, oh, the wind is easy class four. No, the wind is hard class four. And you can make the case that Ramshorn is even class five. It's bullshit at high water. So somebody might think, oh, I've done a class, um, I've done a class four run somewhere else. The upper Clackamas has some class fours on it. So I'm ready for the wind. And that's a massive jump and a half from the Clackamas to the wind. So I know I've gone through a lot of things here. I just want to finish up by saying, uh, again, this is a communication tool. This helps us communicate to others the difficulty of a run. Do they have the abilities to do the run? And it's imperfect. And rapids are, don't, they're, they're on a continuum. They're all a little bit different. Uh, and so it's imperfect, but it's the tool we have. And it's not just one, two, three, four, five, six. It's one, one plus, two minus, two, two plus, three minus, three, three plus, four minus, four, four plus, five minus, five, five plus, and six. So there's, whatever that is, 10, 11, there's a whole graduation. And once you get to the five, um, you know, there's like, oh, it's easy class five, it's hard class five, it's, high, it's class five with wood, it's class five. There's a whole bunch of um, nuances uh, that you can add to class five and communicate with their friends. There is a thought like a 5.1, 5.2, 5.3 scale theoretically that nobody uses. Uh, but I think that people that vote class five have a good way of communicating. Although they complain about the system, you know, hey, this is class five. It's a little harder than blah, blah, blah run. Uh, and there's two big portages, right? Or it's class five, but you have to run one like really hard class five. Check it out on YouTube before you run it. That kind of thing. So those are my thoughts. Uh, they're imperfect. It's what I think about the, the international scale of river difficulty. If you have things to add or questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, I would just ask that everybody that uses it looks at the official international scale of river difficulty and tries to use that so we have some sort of consistency. Uh, that's it for this episode. See you next one. Thanks.